Hey everybody and welcome to the bullshit party. And welcome to my new garage that I just bought. Only one problem with it, it's empty. So in this one we're gonna fix that problem by purchasing our first vehicle for the garage. And for those of you who already read the title, yep, we're purchasing the Imponent Beater Dukes. So in this video we're gonna be reviewing it, we're gonna see how it handles, how it accelerates, how its stop speed is, and most importantly how it sounds. It's a muscle car after all. And for those of you who have seen my videos before, you know that I'm a sucker for muscle cars, so I'm really excited for this one. Especially since it's fairly cheap, it's probably the cheapest vehicle from this update. I think I should clarify that, I mean the cheapest vehicle that's actually worth something. And with the magic of editing, here we have the Imponent Beater Dukes. And looking at it from afar, it looks absolutely stunning. But as I get closer, I start to notice something. Do you notice it too? Looks like elephants use the car for a chair. And since I didn't read the description of the car, I was really confused at this point, I really had no idea what was going on. Honestly, my best guess was that there was some sort of a glitch in the game, so I wanted to just get in the car and get it out of the garage and see how it looks in the sunlight. And as you can imagine, the crooked panels and the bent hood look like absolute garbage in the sunlight. But we are gonna be visiting Los Santos Customs very soon and we're gonna be seeing the customization options for the car, so enough about that. Let's talk about the features it has. And the first feature that I want to mention is the headlights themselves. Much like the original Dukes, here you have a headlight protector that goes up and down depending if you're using the headlights or not. The interior of the car is excellent, if you're a hobo. But to be fair, if my theory was correct and elephants did use this car for a chair, it actually doesn't look that bad. I think it has character. Character of a homeless person. And let's hear the sound. Now all we need to do is make our way to Los Santos Customs and see what we can customize on the car. But first, I want to show you how interactive the car is. And what I mean by that is to see what basically we can open on it. Happy to say that you can open both doors, the hood and the trunk. I don't know why I would care about this, but well, there you go, you're welcome. And with that completely useless piece of information, let's burn some rubber and go to Los Santos Customs. Oh, and just to avoid people asking in the comment section, yes, the car is rear wheel drive. It's a muscle car after all. So first impressions of the stock version of the car. Great sound, horrible exterior and horrible interior. And I'm only saying they're bad because they're weathered. And I understand they're supposed to be weathered, but let's see what we can do in Los Santos Customs when we customize this bad boy. As for everything else, I think it sounds fantastic, I really like the headlights, and I don't mind how it slides left and right all the time. Actually, muscle cars are my favorite thing to drive in GTA Online. And I think this particular one captures the spirit of the 1970 Dodge Charger perfectly. As I said in the beginning, I'm a sucker for old American muscle cars. And now pretending to be lost, I'm just gonna cut a little bit of time to the point where we enter Los Santos Customs. Yeah, I was totally lost. What brings you in today? And just like with every video, I'm gonna repair the damage that I've done to the car and then upgrade or max out all the performance options. I do this upfront so I don't forget anything when it comes to the performance side of things. Only thing that I don't do is upgrade the armor because I think it's useless, but if you want to do it, be my guest. Now it's probably a good time to mention that if you like the video or like the content that the Bullshi party produces, like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, well, good job. Now go spread the word. And it's time to customize the car. And this is the actual point that I realized that the car had intentional damage on it. Well, the good news is that you can fix it and the even better news is that you can choose from a variety of front-end splitters. There's something here for everyone, whether you want to make the car as low as possible or if you want to make it sporty. Me, I decided to go for a medium, muscly look. And going over to the exhaust, we have a lot of variety here. So far, I've been very happy with all the vehicles from this update, seeing how much you can customize from them. The side exhaust is definitely a cool look, but I don't think it's for this car. So we're gonna go with something to put on the back, and I ultimately went with four big old pipes. When it comes to fenders, of course, you can repair the broken ones that the car comes with, or you can get these ugly things. And we're on to the grill. And the grill is honestly what makes or breaks this car for me. The grill is what I feel makes this car look a lot like the Dodge. So I decided ultimately to go with the stock option. But if you like one of the others, I totally understand it. It's just not for me. And the hood is probably the most difficult choice for this car, and you'll see why in just a second. As we go through the list of all the hood options, you see they go from sort of normal 
to crazier and crazier and bigger and bigger. I really like the shaker hood, but I wanted to make this car a little bit crazier. Now that's attention to detail. And here we have the weirdest hood option for this car. Twin turbos. Why is it weird? Well, I'll explain. It's an American muscle car, so most people associate American muscle cars with superchargers, not turbos. I actually like all three of them, including the shaker hood, and I was having a really tough time deciding on which one I wanted to go with. But ultimately, you know me, I choose the option that makes the least sense. Yep, we went with twin turbos. I usually don't touch the lights and leave them stuck, but since we're dealing with an older car, I decided to go with the Xenon headlights. And looking at the livery for this car, I can actually see the appeal of the car looking like this. I don't know if you've seen my drift truck, the Drift Yosemite, but it has a rusty look as well. I really like that about it, and at this point I was contemplating doing the same for this car. And going through the rest of the liveries, there are some pretty awesome ones, I gotta say. Very surprised. Next up, Lovers. I never understood those, never liked those, so I'm not gonna put them on my car. And the side mirrors, since we're going with a sort of a modern, old-school look at the same time, I decided to go with chrome mirrors, which are the oval ones. The license plate is black, of course. And for those of you looking to change the horrific interior of the car, you change it through the roll cage options. I personally never understood the appeal of having a roll cage in your GTA Online car, but I guess it's uh, for someone. Anyway, tell me, doesn't this scream bull sheep? like the torn up interior. I was about to leave it like this, but then I came to my senses and uh, went with a clean interior. For the roof options, there's nothing really special to say here. You can either go with a classic one or just a painted regular roof. Oh, or you can choose to paint the roof of your car with a flag for some reason. For spoilers, we have everything from the small, discreet and cool to the big, stupid and unnecessary. So guess which one I went with? No, seriously, guess. No? Wrong. I went with a small and discreet one. Suspension options don't really apply to this car, as it's already very, very low to the ground. As for wheels, I sort of like the stock wheels, but I wanted to see what muscle car wheels we have in the shop. And by that, of course, I mean what wheels are gonna look good on the car. Most of it look good on it, just because of the stance it has. It's aggressive, it's old school, it's a muscle car. Oh, did I mention by the way how much I love the look of this car? I think I did. And speaking of love, show some love in the comment section down below. What do you think of the car? Giving it a number from 1 being horrible, 10 being awesome. What would you rate it? Oh, and while you're at it, you might as well click the like button, because, you know, you like the video. Anyway, back to customizing the car. At this point, I realized that I wanted to match the rims of the car with the blue intake lines for the turbos. So we'll be matching the blue intake lines with the blue rims. As far as customization goes, next up we have wheelie bars. Why would you want to put one on your car? I have no idea. They're definitely not for me, but you have the option to. Oh, and this is also how you repair your rear bumper. And as always, with the window tint, we go with the light smoke finish. Now all we need to do is see what color best goes with the car. I went through several color options, and I gotta say, this car looks fairly good in most colors. I think it looks fantastic black, but I wanted to customize it a little bit, you know, make it a little bit more mine. So of course, I made it pink. No, I'm just kidding. But speaking of pink things, today I bought the super yacht, and I bought it before the discount. Long story. Anyway, guess what color I made it, viewer? That's right, pink. In my defense, it was done in the middle of a live stream, and I sort of asked the viewers what color they wanted me to make it, so it's sort of my fault. But to make sure that you don't miss any future updates or any cool future live streams, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as I'm blabbing about the live stream that I did today, look at the car and tell me it doesn't look beautiful. I think it looks great at the moment, but the secondary color is a bit off. I wanted to make it chrome, but chrome isn't an option for me because it's still locked. So the next best thing is to make the entire car unicolor.
And just in case you were wondering if we're done, well, almost. This is something that I almost never do, put libraries on cars, but I felt like something was missing from this one. It looked a little bit naked, especially with the unicolor, so I had to do something about it. As I said a little bit earlier, I think Rockstar did a great job with the liveries in this update, and I really like several of them. But the one that I think is best fitting for the car that I'm making are the white stripes. And there we have it guys, the car is customized. We have a finished car, now let's go to the street and see how it performs. I want you to give the car a number value in the comment section down below, giving it a number from 1 to 10, 1 being horrible and 10 being completely awesome. I think we know what I'd give it, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. And I'm gonna say it again, this is probably the cheapest, useful car from this update, costing a little bit under 380000 We saw the visual change as we were modifying it, but what is the change in the performance and the way it handles? Well, first of all, the driver's the same, so we can't expect any miracles, but the car performs, in my opinion, very, very well. It's very slidey, it's very back-heavy, it's very unstable when you want it to be. And that's cool, that's fun, that's what a muscle car should be. The extra power is definitely noticeable, especially around corners. And I also feel the extra grip from the spoiler that we've added. One thing that probably not a lot of people are talking about is the sound the car makes after you upgrade the turbo. And I specifically say turbo, because that's the option you select in Los Santos Customs when you want to upgrade it. But the attention to detail of this vehicle extends to the sound it makes after you upgrade that option. Because it doesn't sound like a turbo, it sounds like a supercharger, which is what it's supposed to be. And how fitting that I'm crashing into everything I see. As I said, car is awesome, but the driver sadly is the same. And I think as a conclusion it's important to say that this is an excellent car for free roaming, and this is what I'll be mostly using it for. There are faster cars and cars with higher top speed in the muscle class that you should buy before this one. But for what you're getting, for the price you pay, I think this one can be beat. And with that, we're gonna be ending the video. Thank you so much to everybody who watched, hopefully you liked it, and if you did, hopefully you left a like on the video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you click the subscribe button so you stay tuned for all future updates, not only about the channel, but also in regards to GT Online. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Oh, and here's Willy.